You're an adventurer. Come to the ancient city of Arcadia to clear out all of the monsters that have infested this once beautiful town. Catch is, you're not the only adventurer out there coming to Arcadia for glory. There's actually up to three other groups. So the question is, can you kill the most monsters, earn the most gold, find the coolest equipment, and most importantly, backstab the other adventurers so that you can come away earning all of the glory and becoming the most famous hero in the history of Arcadia. That is the premise for Arcadia Quest, a really amazing minis focused game from Cool Mini or not. Arcadia Quest is a dungeon crawler. Think of it as Dungeons and Dragons without the role playing. And just like D&D, you're gonna find gold, buy new equipment to improve your characters, and of course, kill lots of monsters. Each player chooses three heroes to enter Arcadia. These will be your champions through multiple adventures, so choose wisely. Every hero has a defensive rating, a health score, and some sort of special ability. While you have starting items, they're pretty weak. Fortunately, you can earn new items by completing quests, or by purchasing them at the end of any scenario. Arcadia Quest uses a modular board with nine double-sided pieces. That means there are actually a lot of combinations for dungeon layout. This one happens to be the end campaign, but there are 10 others you could encounter before your final fight against Lord Fang. Combat is simple, intuitive, and most importantly, a lot of fun. On your turn, you can activate one hero, move them up to three spaces, and tango with a monster either in melee or ranged combat. Your roll dice equal to the attack power of whatever weapon you activate for that battle. And once activated, a weapon is exhausted and can't be used until you spend a turn resting your heroes. Roll the dice. And if the monster has any defense, another player rolls for them. If you're doing melee attacks, you want to see swords on those dice. Each one counts as a hit. For ranged, you want bows to show up. But a star means you got a critical hit. Not only does it count as a hit for melee or ranged attacks, but you also get to roll an extra attack die as well. Defenders, they want to roll shields. Each shield cancels one hit. They also have critical blocks, which allow them to roll another die. In this way, even someone who deals five hits can still be blocked by someone who's rolling a single die. They just have to roll out of their minds and keep getting crits. Every hit that gets through is a point of damage. Monsters take wounds and, with luck, shuffle off this mortal coil. But monsters also get to counterattack. See this number? This is their overkill rating. Do this much damage in a single attack, the enemy is so obliterated, there's no counterattack. And counterattacks are the only time enemies can come at you. Well, that and when you leave yourself vulnerable by passing through a square they protect. PvP combat works the same way, except defending heroes don't get counterattacks. So here's some tough news to take. You might want to sit down for this. Your heroes are gonna die in this game, quite often. But they won't stay dead. Taking a recovery action respawns fallen heroes, though they will end up with this gnarly looking death token. Now for most scenarios, you play until someone has completed three different quests. Most quests being like, pick up this item guarded by some ugly monster. After about an hour or so, someone will have completed three of those quests, and then it's time to party. I mean, sort through all the loot and buy shiny things. There's a pretty nifty drafty market for new items. Hope you saved up some gold. And then comes a reckoning for all those deaths. For every death token a character earned in that scenario, you draw that many death curses. And you keep the highest numbered curse. These things suck, and generally assure you will die more often in the next scenario. Like this card. It takes up an item slot. Having one less item can really cause some resource management issues. Remember, Every time you use a weapon, it exhausts. One less weapon means one less turn before you have to rest your heroes. After all of this is done, you tally up victors in different categories, like who had the most gold. Once you finish the final scenario, you tally up who had the most awards. That person is the overall winner. Everyone else is locked away in a dungeon.
I have an admission to make. I have a real bias when it comes to judging Arcadia Quest. And that's because I am a sucker for minis. I've bought games that have minis that I've kind of enjoyed just because, even though they're not great games, just because the minis are cool. And I gotta tell you, Arcadia Quest has some really, really cool minis. The reason why this game costs $100 is because the production quality is through the roof. These minis look amazing. These monsters look incredible. I mean, this troll has a sack with bones, skeleton bones in it. You know, it, it's, it's an awesome looking set. Even unpainted, these minis look fantastic, right? Everything about it is great. And so that alone is why I got the game to begin with. But I have to say, I am so pleased because Arcadia Quest is a fantastic game. Uh, I'm a big fan of Descent and uh, Hero Quest and other dungeon crawly types of games. And one of the things that I really enjoy about this is that it is not actually a co-op game. Yes, you will kill monsters that might help somebody else, but in reality, you have your own three set of heroes, somebody else has their own three set of heroes, and you're vying against each other. And in fact, to win any of the scenarios that are in the book, you have to complete at least one PvP quest, which means that no matter what, how many monsters you kill, no matter how many special items you find, whatever else it is, if you want to win a scenario, you're going to have to attack your fellow players in the end. And that's one of the cool things about it is that you're all on the board fighting monsters and at the same time looking over your shoulder going, is this person going to finally come after me now that my character has been wounded? Right? Because you know it's going to happen. And I think that's a really cool element. And then the other thing that I really, really enjoy about Arcadia Quest is one, the combat system is super simple, but really enjoyable. But I love the customization aspect of it. So we do a draft for who, what heroes you get before you start a campaign, which is six scenarios. So that's five to six hours of game time. And so right off the board, you've got a bunch of different heroes. So you might just have a different setup when you, tell, when you start a campaign. But on top of that, each of these heroes has four spaces for items. So which items I buy, which items I find, and who I equip them to is going to change no matter what one scenario to the next and that can change the game as well so it, it really is a very dynamic game though it only comes with these nine pieces that that have you know two versions on each side it this actually is a game with a lot of variation to it um, and i really really enjoy that it really just satisfies my itch of I don't want to role play right now. I just kind of want to have the fun experience of playing a D&D type game where we're just going around killing monsters and then having a lot of interaction where we're messing with each other as well is, is a lot of fun and a good twist on it. So Arcadia Quest, I could not recommend this anymore. Great figs, like really simple but fun, enjoyable gameplay and replay value through the roof. A fantastic game from Cool Maneer Not. Definitely, definitely recommend it.